This video is on IPv6 concepts. Let's first look at the IPv6 address. IPv6 address consists of 128 binary bits. These bits are divided into 8 16-bit segments, and each 16-bit segment is converted into 4-digit hexadecimal number and separated by a colon. They use the term nibble to represent a group of 4 hex digits or 16 binary bits. In an IPv6 address, we have 8 nibbles separated by colons. Since IPv6 is longer than IPv4, it supports two types of abbreviations to make things a little bit easier. Both abbreviations work with zeros. The zeros have to be leading, meaning it can't be between anything else within a nibble. So let's look at the two abbreviations. The first abbreviation allows us to skip leading zeros within a nibble, and the second abbreviation allows us to convert all the zeros into a colon. But you can only use it once. Once again, the zero has to be leading, and this abbreviation allows you to apply it to multiple nibbles. Take a look at the video very carefully to understand this concept. A lot of IPv6 addresses contain long sequences of zeros, so these two abbreviations help a lot. IPv6 networks use stateless address auto configuration, SLAAC, to assign IP addresses. With stateless address auto configuration, devices send the router a request for a network prefix, and the device then uses the prefix along with its own MAC address to create an IP address. Stateless address auto configuration is a process that IPv6 node, host, or routers use to automatically configure IPv6 addresses for interfaces. The node builds various IPv6 addresses by combining an address prefix with either an identifier derived from the MAC address of the node or a user-specified interface identifier. The node performs duplicate address detection to verify the uniqueness of the address before signing it to the interface. The node sends out a neighbor solicitation query to the new address and waits for a response. If the node does not receive a response, then the address is assumed to be unique. If the node receives a response in the form of neighbor advertisement, the address is already in use. If a node determines that its tentative IPv6 address is not unique, then auto configuration stops and manual configuration of the interface is required. Configure router advertisement has vulnerability. With IPv6, routers will send out multicast messages to announce their availability and associated information. The information is used by neighbor discovery protocol to detect what is available and configure accordingly. A problem is that the messages are unsecured, making them susceptible to spoofing. To increase security, you can configure IPv6 router advertisement guard to protect the network against router advertisement messages generated by unauthorized routers trying to join the network. The IPv6 router advertisement guard feature provides support for allowing the network administrator to block or reject unwanted or rogue router advertisement guard messages arriving at the network device platform. Router advertisements are used by devices to announce themselves on the link. The IPv6 RA guard feature analyzes these RAs and filters out the RAs sent by the unauthorized devices. In host mode, all RA and routed redirect messages are not allowed on the port. The RA guard feature compares configuration information on the layer 2 device with the information found and received on the RA frame. Once the layer 2 device has validated the content of RA frame and router redirect the frame against the configuration, it forwards the RA to the unicast or multicast destination. If the RA frame content is not validated, the RA is dropped. It's good to mention that IPv6 supports dual stack. Dual stack device is a device with the network interface that can originate and understand both the IPv4 and IPv6 packets. The dual stack device can interoperate equally with IP4 devices and IPv6 devices, as well as other dual stack devices. When both devices are dual stack, the two devices agree on which IP version to use. This capability is useful when transitioning from one to another during the adoption and deployment phases. It allows IPv6 packets to be transmitted over IPv4 network without having to create a complex tunnel. 
IPv6 tunneling is a mechanism for encapsulating IPv4 and IPv6 packets inside IPv6 packets. It is used to form a virtual point-to-point -point link between two IPv6 nodes. IPv6 tunnels are stateless and have no knowledge of the configuration or even existence of the remote tunnel endpoint. Once the IPv6 tunnel is configured, packets are encapsulated and forwarded regardless of where the decapsulating device is present or not. IPv6 tunneling allows hosts in one private IP network to communicate with hosts in another private IP network by providing a tunnel between two routers. The IPv6 tunnel connection endpoints are terminated via a virtual tunnel interface VTI configured in each device.